and as the rule seemed to be that they should all speak in turn, he went on with, She'll have to go back from here as luggage. Alice couldn't see who was sitting beyond the beetle, but a hoarse voice spoke next. Change engines, it said, and there it choked and was obliged to leave off. It sounds like a horse, Alice thought to herself, and an extremely small voice close to her ear said, You might make a joke on that. Something about horse and horse, you know. Then a very gentle voice in the distance said, She must be labelled lass with care, you know. And after that, other voices went on. What a number of people there are in the carriage, thought Alice, saying, She must go by post, as she's got a head on her. She must be sent as a message by the telegraph. She must draw the train herself the rest of the way, and so on. But the gentleman dressed in white paper leaned forwards and whispered in her ear, Never mind what they all say, my dear, but take a return ticket every time the train stops. Indeed, I shan't, Alice said rather impatiently. I don't belong to this railway journey at all. I was in a wood just now, and I wish I could get back there. You might make a joke on that, said the little voice close to her ear. Something about you would if you could, you know. Don't tease so, said Alice, looking about in vain to see where the voice came from. If you're so anxious to have a joke made, why don't you make one yourself? The little voice sighed deeply. It was very unhappy, evidently, and Alice would have said something pitying to comfort it. If it would only sigh like other people, she thought. But this was such a wonderfully small sigh that she wouldn't have heard it at all if it hadn't come quite close to her ear. The consequence of this was that it tickled her ear very much and quite took off her thoughts from the unhappiness of the poor little creature. 